Okay, so we're back here with another day, and I've actually finally managed to fix my sleep schedule, at least I'm hoping I did. Um, still waiting for the results to come in of whether or not I'll make it through the entire day and then keep this sleep schedule up the entire week. Anyways, last uh, video we made, we were working on the Axis GUI, getting it all going and various other things. Between that video and this video, I went through and I started working on the GUI components, um, trying to flush them up. I decided not to record me doing this because it's just boilerplate code on boilerplate code, and I've been doing way too many videos of boilerplate code. So anyways, um, uh, this is now obsolete. So this is the scroll thing made by Poopsicle. I, it, it worked. I ended up taking his uh, his mouse movement code here, at least the I took this line, which is something I wrote, so I don't have to give him full credit for this. Um, this worked, but what I went ahead and did, and if I can go find it, I made an actual GUI component for this. So we now have something called GUI scroll bar. If we go to this, it has our up and down button in it. It automatically does our render for our backend and everything else. So it does everything for us, and we only have to register one button ID. So what I decided to do is I decided to say, okay, every GUI component that goes on the screen is a button, and this is how we're going to get around um, having to build up special uh, formatting, special handling, and all this other really weird stuff to get our components to work. Instead, we just piggyback the button system, and that'll give us all of our button calls and make sure that we receive all the events properly and make sure all our stuff works. And all we have to do is inside of our button, which is now a component, is detect for where the player is clicking, what he's doing, so that way we, we return the proper event. So in the case of our scroll bar, uh, we only want to return true if we press the button if we press the up and down arrows. We then want to return false saying nothing else happened. That way if you accidentally put a button over top of the scroll bar, it doesn't care. It'll, it'll work. Um, oh, we also got the scroll. Uh, thing. So if your mouse is now over top of the uh, scroll bar, you can scroll up and down, which is really, really cool. Uh, Poopsicle's version did not have that fully implemented properly. Uh, he had something like it, but his something like that was you only had one scroll bar for the entire GUI. So if you went up and down, it would move every scroll bar on the GUI. Mine now will only move the scroll bar that you're over top of. I'm also going to add uh, some listener support for this. That way, if you decide if the mouse is over top of your your list menu, you can scroll that too. That's actually probably what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and make some more components. Um, the next component I want to do is make a list. So it, it'll be a list component, so it'll list all your stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll sort of mirror Java's way of doing that. Not completely though, but it will do something like that. And we'll do a few other things. So what, what we're going to do, so how it's going to work is you'll define some kind of render component or some kind of creation component. And every time it recreates the list, it'll go, okay, we have 30 entries to put in this list, and we can display entry 20 to 25 or something. Uh, and then you'll just display those entries. So you go through and you go, hey, we got five components, and we'll make our buttons and stuff like that. We'll figure out how we're going to do We're going to wing it because I have no exact plan for this, but I want to I want to get some kind of component like that because we, we need it. We, we A lot of the GUIs, we actually make these lists right here. As I noted, you can scroll bar this. I actually fixed the scroll bar rendering. The rendering wasn't perfectly dead on. It was having problems. Also, we got a scroll bar over here for the... Uh, the actual group settings. So if you click this, uh, this scroll bar is functional, kind of. Not really. Uh, I got to get it to be probably the same length as this one. So I need to look at what the link, length of the one above it is and change its length. So come up here, and this is 200. I don't know why I said the 300. I think I said 300 because it wasn't rendering properly, and then uh, I did what any any inexperienced person does, and I just winged it. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Let me let me look at it real quick again. And forty. Wanna, yeah, the the proportions are correct, although it doesn't really look like it. See, if you go like you try to trace it here, and you look at it on your screen, because of the color difference behind it, it looks like this one is slightly above. Or that's just my eyes are failing me again. I like, like to point out that my eyes don't work perfectly. My left eye is slightly colorblind. It's the most tragic thing in my opinion. But hey, people have worked with it, so I'll, I'll I won't complain. Anyway, so we're going to do this thing over here. We're going to do our thing here. Um, the next thing also to do is uh, drag and release, too, on the scroll bar. That it, um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Because what that would be is you would have to constantly keep track of the drag movement, and then you would have to figure out at what point do we decide, decide to each action. So we're not going to implement that now. We'll do this, and you just do this way, and hopefully it'll be enough because... Uh, drag and drop is just going to be too much to deal with right now. Uh, we also need to clean up the scroll bar. You notice how these look nice in 3D and these ones look really, really flat. 
Uh, either we got to make all of our buttons look flat or we got to make all of our buttons look 3D. And then because I have the Minecraft style, I want to make all my buttons look 3D. So we're going to want to make these look 3D. So we're going to have to clean that up here. Actually, you know what? That's a good start. It's, it's early in the morning. I'm still a little groggy. So we're going to just clean up some textures. That gives me an excuse to pull out my art palette and play with colors. I've tried to figure out some way to make that a joke, and I just can't think of a way to do it. It's just too early in the morning. Okay. Assets, Volts Engine, Textures, GUI. And we want GUI bars. We also need to make a scroll bar. Right now what we're doing is we're piggybacking <clears throat> the background render, but we just need to kind of make a, a custom render for this. So come over here, and here's what we got. So we got a big wide one, which I believe is like 12 wide or something. Uh, we'll measure real quick. Whatever number we get, we have to divide by 2, just as a tip. So that's 30, so that's 15 wide. And this is actually 5 wide. No. That's 18, that's 9 wide. Let me let me relook at this one again because I think I misjudged. Yeah, yeah that's, that's 15 wide, yeah. So we got, we got this here, and this needs to be set up so it looks like these buttons. So we're going to need a nice dark bottom edge, and then a light outer edge. So these are pretty much inverted, is what's wrong with these. Yeah, they're inverted. Uh, we'll clean up this one, and we'll deal with the 15 one. The 15 scroll bar right now, I'm not too worried about. But uh, you know what, I'm going to cut this out real quick. We're going to make a new layer. So it'll be 9 picks uh, bar, and we'll paste it right back where it was at. That way we have a, a little bit of a separation so I can hide and close these ones, and then I can do this real quick. And uh, Yeah, just double-click it and call this the uh, 15 pixel bar. That way I know these are 9 and 15 pixels without ever having to look at them again. That really helps out with that. And then I can select this one, and I kind of want to just really quickly crop the boundary. So let's do this real quick. We'll do layer. Auto crop layer? No. I didn't do anything though. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, oh no, no, I did. Sweet. We'll do the same thing with this one. So we'll go layer, auto crop layer. Yay. Both of those are stuck in their boundary size so they can't change sizes. Nice. And then that lets us go control A so we select our entire thing. And then we can hit uh, invert and flip it. Okay, that works. File, save. Uh, and then I need to go back to this screen and I want to look at what these buttons look like. So we have, uh, I want to say a one pixel border on the one outside. So we need to get rid of this extra edge here. And unfortunately we just got to do that the hard way. And we need a two pixel edge on the other. Actually, you know what? I got a better idea. Since we know we need a, a, a two pixel sized edge on the other side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this color palette and we're going to do this real quick so we can repaint the whole entire other edge, the color we want, without it recalling the whole entire, ah, that's, that's too dark. Um, let's grab this color. And bucket feed here. And then we need to grab this collar. And we'll just go ahead and bucket feed the entire side. Because we, we can repair that. So look at these. We got like a whitish border on the top. Yeah, actually, we look at the, the Minecraft button. It's a little easier to see. So Minecraft border. That, I noticed my buttons are much cleaner looking than the Minecraft ones. The Minecraft ones are slightly pixelated. The mine are like pure, pure, pure colored. I might need to come back through here and pixelate them a little bit. That way they look like this nice grainy looking button. And these are just too clean. Or I need to make a, something that looks a little cleaner. I don't know. Pixelation looks nice. It actually adds a lot more character. Uh, so we want a uh, little grayish border thing. Come down here. Do our other border thing. And I gotta think of like what we're gonna do for detail, because right now we just got this really bland looking scroll bar. There's nothing to it. It's really bland looking. Uh, we need to make it more lively, make it more interesting. Uh, I think we're gonna do that with the scroll itself, and we're gonna leave the background maybe this blander color. 
Anyways, I need a lighter color real quick, and right there, put the edge. Uh, maybe that's not too light. Maybe too dark. Maybe. Uh, it'll work. We don't need perfection. As I said, I'll redo the uh, 15 pixel here later. Ah, uh, let's not be lazy. So control C, come over the 15 here, control V. Drag this to this side, and then what we do is you just copy this entire section here, and then you copy it and move it to the other side. And then we can copy the entire midsection and fill in the gaps. To be honest, I could probably write a program that would render any bar width by just re-rendering the middle section over and over again, but I kind of don't want to do that. I kind of want to have pretty much static bars that we're working with. So hit File, Save. I kind of need to drag these bars down a little bit, make them match the bottom here, that way we're not wasting space. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, this whole GUI is just dedicated to rendering bars. I need to actually go and take all the bars from this screen here and move over to this one. <coughs> yeah. Actually, hold a second, I need to go grab something to drink here. Fortunately, the only thing that's left to drink in my house is a two liter soda. I avoided the water because it's, our water is highly chlorinated. I really wish they didn't have to chlorinate it, but I'm happy they do because we could be having problems like where they have a Flint, Michigan with the water being really crappy. Not exactly the same because theirs is like what a natural gas leak and they still haven't had theirs fixed. Our water luckily is okay. It's the only problem we got is it just tastes like chlorine every so often and that's a really easy problem to solve. I've actually been thinking about making a water distiller to solve it. Anyways, we got a bar here. Now what we need to do is we need to make this scroll bar itself. So I'm going to copy this whole section here because this is the, the max size the scroll bar can be. And we need to make sure we're selecting the right thing. So grab that. Okay, here we go. And then we want to make a new layer. Call it bar scroll. And we're just going to paste. And we're going to drag it all the way over here. So it's right next to its uh, parent object. And now we just need to auto crop. So we'll do layer auto crop layer. And we got to think of like what we're going to make this look like. So we need it to be differentiated from the edge. We don't want to use the same edge colors. Uh, but we still want that kind of gray looking color because that's what all the Minecraft GUIs use. We need to lighten it up a lot. So we're going to do this. Bucket feed. A whiter color. I hate to be using these whiter colors. My, my preferred color palette, for those who are actually ever interested, I like autumn colors. I like oranges. I like the browns. Um, I like the various different colors. The first ever website I ever made was complete autumn colors. I wish I still had that thing. It used to be hosted on our um, my high school's website because we I, they had their web class there for a while. That's where I, my first introduction to a Macintosh was, by the way. I hated those things. They worked, though. I, I, I do admit that. As much as I give Macintosh's shit... They did work. And we're, when I'm saying Macintosh, I, I really do mean Macintosh, not the new Apples. So, so it's one of the old, you know, the tube ones, the big plastic tube ones that look, look all arts and craftsy. They they were actually pretty good. The only only problem I ever had with them was the mouse. I I just could not get used to the fact that there was only one button on the mouse, and then it had a little a little center dial thing. Oh, do I did have to admit some of the applications they had in there were pretty good. They had some really good games on those Macintoshes. Cause I got done with my work all the time early, so I played a I played a lot of games on those computers. Uh, not sh I don't remember what the games were. Only thing I remember is they were good quality, really high resolution. Those were some of the because I remember if they worked correctly, the Macintosh computers had really good graphics early on in their lifetime. It's the reason I think why the school bought them in the first place is that they were great computers for doing web development on it and in the case of web development it was a uh, 
uh, Adobe's web kit, whatever it was called. I forget the name of it at this point in time. Anyways, so what I'm doing right now for the callers is I'm pretty much uh, picking the opposite inversion of callers. And you know what? I did the wrong color on either wrong side. So let's go ahead and grab this here, and we're going to grab the darker color, and we're going to paint bucket the darker color right here. What we want to do is we want to have a contrast of color on the edges so you can clearly definitively see the edges without having to pick a whole new color palette. And of course we had to do this the hard way. Actually, you know what? Watch this magic. Because GIMP selection box actually works like a, I'm like a boss on like paints. I'm trying to sound like a Macintosh fan now. I just realized that it's like, oh my god, this application works so much better than this one. I honestly really don't care too much. As long as I can do my basic stuff every day, I'm usually happy. I got called a, uh, a conformist, I think, once by a Macintosh person because I, I had that mentality where it really didn't matter. It's like, oh, you're just conforming to the, the Windows thing. It's like, I, I, that's not what I said. It's, I don't really care what things look like. Uh, anyways, we need this to look like something. I have a ideal of what I want it to look like in my head, but I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Because I want some kind of scroll bar behavior. What do we got? So the thing is, like, when you look at scroll bars on GIMP right here, they're just solid colors. There's no detail to them. I want something more than that because we have we have detail on the buttons. So the buttons have detail. They have these shadows on them. They have this really nice looking grain to them. Um, but then we don't have that on our stuff. Maybe I just need to do something really simple and just select the whole middle here. And then just go filters. Uh, noise. Yeah, that'll work. That'll give me some noise pattern here. Looks weird though. But you gotta imagine this thing's gonna be like half a size. It's gonna be like this size of this bar here. And then we're gonna colorize it. So it's gonna be that dark color right there. So the fact that we made this white was intentionally because it's gonna be colorized. When you make colorized objects, you want them to be gray. It's the reason why I make everything gray is because we color things. We don't leave them the default, except for the backgrounds here, which you know what? Um, click, I wanna make these uh, white colored. Oh, that looks so bad. Ugh. I like the darker color. <laughs> we'll, we'll colorize it when we get into the, into the back end of the game. It just looks so bad. Ah. Okay, export as bars. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to figure out where a scroll bar location is, but we can do that when we get into the game, so we don't have to do that out of game and get a whole bunch of time wasted. Um, it's probably going to be plus 10, so it'll be the width of this bar plus that one pixel. Ah, oh, you didn't know what, I got to redo this. I just made a, a miscalculation. Uh, something to remember when you're doing, you're working with uh, images inside of uh, Minecraft, if you're going to scale up, so these are scaled up images if you didn't notice already, um, you cannot have one pixel gaps or it won't work. So you notice how there's a two pixel gap here, there's a two pixel gap here, that's intentional. You know what I'm also going to do real quick, uh, I'm going to make a new layer here, I'm going to call it back, I'll put it all the way at the bottom, and then I'm going to get some really fucked up color, like purple. There we go. File save. File export as. That way we can see our screw ups if we mess up with the GY renders. And we can see our gaps. So yeah, there needs to be a zero or two pixel gap between your layers. I, I'm doing two here because I know this GUI is going to be mostly empty, or this texture sheet is going to be mostly empty, so I'm taking advantage of that fact and I'm not mashing things next to each other. Because when you do that, it makes it really hard to tell what's the edge of one component and what's the edge of the other component. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Curious if I should just noise the other ones real quick. So let's export again real quick, just in case I didn't do it. 
Okay, we down screen this and then we can hit run and debug. And this this will be yeah, it'll be ten to find the edge of this. Ten and down one. Okay, and that would be the scroll bar. This means uh, I need a second set of these actually, so hit kill real quick. Okay, so this will be we just call it S bar. Okay, so our current position is 16, so this will be 26. Our V will be 1. And then our height is minus 2 pixels. Yeah, it's sort of. Minus 1, actually. Uh, shoot, we're about to make another mistake here. This needs to move again. As I said, you can't have those 1 pixel gaps. So we're going to actually move this up to the top, so that way I can just leave it 0 as well. Yeah, I got a two gap down here. So this will be uh, zero. And then our height will be 38. Uh, and the way we can tell this, by the way, real quick, is I'll show you how to ro look at this, is if we highlight this, it will give us our size dimension. So right now we are 15 by 276. We're a pixel too wide. Uh, let me fix that. What is our inner dimension here? So we need this to be 7 pixels. And we need this bar to be 7 in the middle. It's not, it's going to be 7.5. Um, thicken up the edge. That's the only thing I think I do. Uh, also, I need to really quickly auto crop this one. So we go layer, auto crop layer. There we go. That one updates itself. Then we go to this layer. And what we want to do is we want to really quickly just color in one side with another shadow. That. Hopefully it doesn't snowball me there. There we go. Yeah, that'll work, I guess. Because the thing is what we're doing, so we're working with a double size texture. So this texture is actually twice the size of what Minecraft expects. That means Minecraft's gonna scale all your, your stuff, dimensions, everything. So we're this is a, this is uh 14 which is our size down here, this is actually seven wide in, in the game. Same thing with this one. This is uh, 18 and this actually turns into nine. And what we wanna make is have a seven pixel wide gap right here, which is 14 and this will match inside there. So that means we need to add an extra edge there. It'll it'll render a little funky. Um, so imagine any two space as a one space, which means this technically, this bar should be wider. It should actually be like four wide. I'm not gonna fix it. Override. Okay. Now we can launch the game. And. Yeah. These all look correct ish. And we just have to come down here and implement them. So when we go to render our scroll, which is done here, we just have to go put S bar everywhere. So it'll be S U S V S with. Um, I don't think S bar tight is actually ever take, taken into account. Current scroll, total size. We need to start using this thing. Uh, by the way, I, ex I uh, prefabbed out the uh, render vertical bar thing. I told, as I said, I was going to do. I went ahead and did it. Uh, I still need to do quite a few other things, so this is not the final version, but this will work. Uh, yeah, this will be S bar. This will be S bar height. Get bottom height, get bottom width, get middle height. 
uh, middle height would be minus by where's the number I'm looking for minus two I guess so it's just gonna be two pixels shorter than the other bar this should work we kept most of the dimensions this is just a render dimension real quick and so is pretty much the rest of this uh, yeah this is a render dimension we can get rid of that I don't render with repeat. So that means if our scroll bar got ridiculously large, which I doubt it will ever get, it, it will go ahead and adapt itself to make sure it renders properly. Uh, cracking my fingers there. I don't know if my microphone can pick it up. Wow, we're 25 minutes in already. These recordings never go fast. Like, I see other developers make recordings and it's like, boom, they do something in like two hours. I'm like, wow, that takes me... I mean, I could do it in two hours, but that takes me like four hours to record or six hours to record or a whole day to record. I have to, I, you know, I'm going to have to go see what they're doing. And I have a feeling they like prep for their stuff. I, I have a feeling that's exactly what happens. I don't prep any of this. I, it probably is the reason why it takes so long to record things. Okay, so we got a bit of a render problem with uh, only the scroll bar. It's uh, two pixels too wide. So I'm going to go up here and change this to a seven. There we go. That updates in real time, which is amazing. Uh, our height's too too long. So we uh, we messed up one of our height variables. So if we go, yeah, uh, back in here. So this is meant to be our total height. This is what our middle height's gonna be. So we need to get uh, our height, which is right here. And this needs to be bar height minus, minus what? Minus eight. And then we're gonna make these four. These are our caps, by the way. So the caps are the render of the top and the bottom. Because what happens is the bar is rendered in three gaps. And yeah, there we go, I fixed it. It looks, uh, it looks a little better. It's a much brighter though. It's problematic slightly. This needs to get darker. We're gonna drop this down the shade. All right, so just top, pop this to the side and we'll sit here and screw with the shade for a little bit. Uh, we need to we need to do this real quick. Final caller caller equals new caller. So this comes out to be oh, it's 116 in each slot. That's not what it is. I had to think for a while what I was doing there, and then we get rid of this variable. Uh, wait, yeah, yes, we, we do. Because then what you do is, in order to get this correct, you go caller.getread divided by 255f, and you'll repeat this for each caller you have. And this will get you your float variable. Because uh, when you go to render with uh, this method we're using, I think there's another method for this, but uh, it wants float values because it, it treats all callers as percentiles. And I think it does this because the monitor can actually render more callers than the game thinks it can render. So when you have a 255 caller thing, you actually have a monitor that may have more than that color wise. But anyways, we can click this and we can now change our color. So we can actually figure out what shade we want and go choose. And then we can hit reload. And that's exactly the color we want. And we can do the same thing with the background. Um, only thing is I think the background actually forces color. Um, no, it doesn't even assign textures either. That's cool. Where's the texture being assigned at in this entire thing? Oh yeah, it's being assigned by the super. Um, so we'll copy this. Now uh, we need to fix that. This means our color shouldn't be final anymore. Uh, though we'll probably final those colors out here a bit. Uh, way too dark. Lighten this up. I love IntelliJ for having this feature. So nice. 
There we go. Look at that. That actually doesn't look too bad. Blends a bit. On this one over here, it blends in a little too much with the background, so you uh, might want to change the background color. But uh, it looks good. Actually, let's, uh, let's bring, bring this up two shades. And you can color everything in this game. You can actually color these buttons. These buttons can be changed color willy-nilly. It works the same way. Because how it's working is it's not based on the... Well, actually, it kind of is based on the texture. But uh, there's some kind of shader inside of how Minecraft runs. It's in the background. It's in OpenGL. So you pass all your stuff in OpenGL, and OpenGL then runs the shader program, which then goes, oh, here's how you want your stuff to look like. It does all that stuff. Uh, although I think... I'm not sure if Minecraft uses shaders, though. I've never spent a huge amount of time looking at its back end. I know how I can do it with my, my game I'm working on. You write a shader program, and then when it goes to run and render each individual pixel, you go, okay, here's the call we want to modify that pixel by. And you really quickly do that in the GPU, and it runs. Uh, it means if you can pre-bake your textures, do it. It runs so much faster. Doing this colorization here actually does slow uh, stuff down. It may not look like it, and it's not by slow down by much. But you got to think like it's a compounding issue. The more you do this, the slower and slower you start to slow the game down. That's the reason why big games actually slow computers down. It's not because that big game actually has a huge amount going on. It's because that big game has a whole bunch of small things going on. And those small things add up. Anyways, we got this done, and now we want to do our list. So we're going to have to close Minecraft, of course, because we're going to make a whole bunch of things, and I can't reload why Minecraft's running. Although I think I'm going to go hunt down that plugin that lets you reload when, whatever the crap you want while you're running. So we're going to make a component, and we're going to call this GUI list box. Maybe. GUI array. Yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> Extends, uh, we'll extend just, we'll extend the scroll bar, I think. No, we're going to include a scroll bar, though. So we're going to do GUI something. We'll extend component real quick. And we just got to do this real quick. The reason why I'm doing that is I got some super methods you can call that will bring back your exact object, and it's just designed to uh, be an easy button here. Okay. Uh, we don't want the string key here. We, we're not going to do a title bar for this. We might do one later. But we need to have some kind of render. We're going to have a scroll bar. And we're going to have a button array. So the width and height are going to be sort of useless, because what's going to be is it's going to go int uh, buttons, or int uh, entries, there's some number of entries you can show. Uh, it's going to then be, well actually we're just going to default the entry size real quick. And we're going to go down to the one this way, so it'll default our size to 200 by something. And then we want to go public void set uh, entries shown and entries and then we'll store some kind of variable so it'd be like private and entries shown equals zero right now i don't really need to preset it because there's no point it's actually gonna slow the G gpu or slow so the slow the uh construction time of this down slightly but it's not a huge issue so this dot entry shown equals entries, and actually, you know what I need? This needs to be uh, set entries shown entries, and we're gonna set our height this way. Uh, we're also gonna go GUI scroll bar, uh, scroll bar. I actually need to make a parent component real quick to do a whole bunch of stuff here, and I'll do that in a second. Maybe uh, this will be button ID zero. Button IDs don't really matter. Um, oh, we need a... We need something here. Public GUI component parent component 
I need this for a reason. And what's this? The reason I need this is that every time we click a button in here, I need it to call back on the component host. Um, and we need an actual thing for this. So this would be GUI uh, container or component container. Extends GUI component. And we're going to want to do our little thing here. So the E extends this. And this will be E. The only reason I'm doing this is if I go up to the super here again and is I got this. So that way when you call set with, it'll give you back the exact class type. Uh, create constructors, magic super. Whatever, we'll, we'll do all of the constructors. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're going to have a list. We're going to have a list of uh, GUI components. So components equals new array list. And we're going to start casting events to these or sending events to these. This will be protected, so you can only go through your list um, if you're, it's subcomponents. You won't be able to access this externally. And then we need like some kind of action performed in here. But um, we need to make sure that in our component thing, we're keeping track of our parent class, which will be a container. It has to be a container we won't have the callbacks we need. And we go into GUI scroll bar, which by the way is a container. So we're going to have to change this. And the reason we want to change this is the up and down button. And there's a lot of little things here. So when you create, contain, create this, we're going to need some kind of add method. It's going to be protected. Oh no, this will be a public, so you can make your own containers and stuff. Protected void add GUI component component. If components dot contains component this dot components dot add component component dot set or component dot parent component equals this there we go and we go over to our scroll bar real quick and we'll we know what we need something a little better here too. Um, Now there's a way to do this. I'm just gonna remember how to do it. Like E extends GUI component. Return E pass E N return component. There we go. That's that's basically like a really cool inventive way to uh add your component without having to create a second line in your, your system here. So literally you can go like this, add, and that, that literally is how cool that, that method is. That's where generics have like really cool power. The only downside of that is that method can easily break if you uh, misuse it, and it has a lot of problems. Uh, it says there's an error in here, I don't see an error. But what we want to do is we need to draw things. So. We need to copy this. Now I'm going to close a few things here. So we want, we want this here. And here's where we start putting our overrides in here. So we're going to go super dot do draw mc mouse x mouse y. Uh, what does super draw actually do? Okay, it draws a texture rectangle. So that's exactly what we want. And if we have enable, it draws a string thing. Uh, then we're going to go, okay, for uh, GUI component. Component. Components. I'm going to go basically component dot, dot draw button is kind of how this works. This will call draw button, which will then go update, which will update our, our mouse position and a few other things. Update basically just tracks to see if our mouse is over top of the button. Uh, then if their button is visible, it'll bind a texture, color, do all the fun things. Then it calls do render, which actually renders the background. Um, Oh, I'll have to get back to that in a second. Move this over here. So we don't need to call this anymore because now these are parent components. Um,
We need an action perform combat callback. So I'm going to go here real quick. And we're going to copy this, but we're going to do a few things with it. Uh, actually, we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to copy it and just be done with it like that. Boom, dead. How we handle this again? So we go over here. It's handle mouse input is how we do our scroll wheel. Okay, I don't I don't need to do anything with this. That's actually fine. Um, actually, you know what? I can do something with this. This is actually pretty ingenious. Give me a second. Or no. No, I can't do anything with this. I was thinking like I can mitigate or, or move the uh, the controls for this to the buttons themselves, and I just realized that that actually would not work. That would uh, be too complicated to properly handle. But we want to do this, and we want to, yeah, we want to copy these two methods, and we'll get those two in a second. Those two down there are basically button click methods, and what did you pop up for? Oh, I know why you popped up. We were going to you real quick to do some things. Okay, so we want to we want to basically detect if we click the super. So I'm going to go false. If so, if you didn't click the super, you didn't do anything. And then what we want to do is we're going to go for each of the components. We want to go, hey, did, did, did something click you? So we're going to go if component dot mouse press mc mouse mouse y. So we just go, hey, did, did something press you? And the, basically, if you're inside and the mouse is down pretty much, you're, you're usable. Then we want to return true, but before we return true, we want to call our action performed. So we're going to go action performed. And then component. And we're going to actually change this to component. Uh, we'll leave that as a button because then you can have buttons on your screen and stuff. So lowest uh, version is a button. Okay, we'll do that real quick so I know what that is. And then we'll document this real quick too as well. Uh, call to add a component to this container okay and then we just need these two these are the last two uh, redirect calls so what we're doing is we're kind of wrappering things and yeah, this will be whatever that method is I forget what these two methods I'm thinking this one is uh, like graphics display and this one is audio down here and this would be yeah, my brain's a little sluggish on this one. But anyway, this is uh, if your button was pressed pretty much, do the audio over the click. And yeah, that, that should work. Oh, yeah, we almost forgot to do the mouse release. Component dot mouse release, mouse X, mouse Y. Really quick, I look over this to make sure I got all the correct callbacks. Yep. Pop over here, clean up this one real quick, and this can stay the same. This can go goodbye. Uh, this needs to turn into action performed. So we go over here, copy our action performed pop it here and then what we want to do is our up button is zero and our other ones etc so this is pretty much exactly how you do action perform normally so you don't have to do anything special here um, Yeah, I, I technically I need to return true here, but we're just going to return true always if the user clicks the screen. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. So we'll do all of our trigger events here. And this is uh, button.id equals zero. And then button ID equals one. Cool. So yeah, that, that cleans this class up pretty good. Um, the only thing left we got to do is like update positions and stuff, which I'm going to actually make a super method. 
because uh, we have a whole bunch of subcomponents, that means we actually kind of want to be updating our position data. And we're going to actually put this into here, and this will be called called anytime this component or its parent is adjusted. Adjusted in size, shape, or position. Cool. And what we'll do is this will just be called anytime we like set the height or width or yeah. Go in here real quick. So we got like a site site hit with yeah. So if you go to the container and we go with toss these in here. Of course we're gonna oh we cool we haven't either so I don't have to do anything. Um, so it'd be super dot set height height and then this would be update positions and we'll grab this method and we'll put it in here as well. And then what we need to do after this is just kind of loop through and update everything. So it'd be component dot update positions, and we're good pretty much. That's most of what we needed. Put some add overrides here. And let's just do super dot update position here, just in case we change anything. Don't need update position there it's already handled in the super override we don't really care about width because width doesn't actually modify anything in this um, scroll bars are always a constant width uh, we should probably reflect that by doing something real quick uh, public ui scroll bar <clears throat> set width and w return this I missed a D. There we go. There we go. That should do the trick. Because like either your width is a constant variable right now, so it's pretty much bar width, which we're actually will move down here. That way, if we change it. Oh wow, there's quite a few spots where I've, I'm using bar width inappropriately. Or somebody would call it magic numbers, because that's pretty much what I'm doing, I'm using magic numbers. And the terminology for that is, it's a number that has no definitive explanation, like, we're doing times two, two what, what does times two mean in this situation? We're, we're, we're going, these are the width of the button. Um, <clears throat> Okay, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. And then of course your total height is equivalent to your middle height plus your cap size. And your cap sizes are pretty much constant. This means that there is a minimum height of uh, 40 that is, can actually be set for a scroll bar. Um, and we need to reflect that. So this needs to be math dot the larger of the two and then 40. Uh, 40 plus 18 actually. Cool. A little bit of documentation there goes a long way. And refactor. I need to encapsulate this real quick. Encapsulate fills. Refactor. Kind of want to don't want to really expose anything that isn't final. There we go. 
and then okay we're back to our array thing so we got we got our our scroll bar our scroll bar is going to have to move every time we change the width so every time we change the width we want to throw the scroll bar to the le right or left um we're going to do right rendering only so we'll have to come back later um to do implement left bar position I actually leaned my chair a little too far there and that sound you heard was the wood. Uh, well, actually, I'm curious if my mic even picked that up. I uh, probably didn't. I'm twisting my chair right now and I don't see the mic activating. Okay. Um, let's see. So X position, Y position. Uh, we're going to do just set this to zero, zero real quick. Or no, zero would be our X. Okay, so our height's gonna stay zero. This is gonna be, there should be like a default size dot X. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this is actually a curious thing. I, I need to update the subcomponents positions, and I didn't think about this. Is that that actually, these need to be shifted by the components origin and I, I'm doing that already in the scroll bar so we don't have to worry about it but it, it'd be problematic so so we're gonna make sure we we update our our main components so because they're not they're not ordered properly It's a bit of a bit of work that has to be done to this. There's got there's a lot of things I got to do. I got to set up a relative rendering and relative positioning paths because this is something I do with my game GUIs, and it's really really nice that you don't have to worry about your exact position on the screen. It's all relative positions, and it does a, it does wonders. But in this case, we're, we're we're dealing with exact positions, and that has to be fixed at some point. But for the moment, we're going to get around it just by doing like this and doing set. Uh, or is no set position to be. X position equals X position, and it'll be scroll bar dot Y position equals Y position, and this will be plus width pretty much. So you're gonna want this to be width minus nine. That that way it hugs the side. We don't have to worry about height because it's it's always the same height. Actually, we want to change the scroll bar height so set height to be our height. That way our height automatically adjusts. And then this, by calling update position with super, this will update this this guy's uh, button locations in theory. So we don't have to mess with that. But we got our button ID is zero, our default sizes. Then we need so X, Y, height. Max scrolls, so that'd be uh, entries. What are we missing? Oh, you're a float. That's why. Um, so be. I need to work on this a little bit. Plus X minus nine. And then, yeah, this actually also needs to be GY scroll bar, bar width. So what this action needs to be. That way if we change the bar size at all at any given point in the future, it automatically updates. And then our, this is our Y position. So this just needs to be Y. We're gonna we're gonna move the ordering on this real quick. That way it's a little easier to understand. And that should work. So we got our thing there. Uh, we need to add our subcomponents. So we're gonna need a button array. CGI button. Because it, we're, we're, right now we're just gonna do a, a button array, which is how this is gonna work. And that'll be how we handle our entries. So this will be 
button entries. And then we need to do an integer, a private int selected entry equals negative one. So we got nothing selected by default. We're going to make a method for this. So be protected void create entries or reload entries because we'll probably set some reload code here later. Let's be reload entries actually this needs to be down here because uh, what we're gonna have to do is if if existing entries doesn't equal a certain value so we're gonna go if entries shown doesn't equal entries then we need to delete our button array. So we want to go if button entries doesn't equal null. Then we need to go for GUI button. And these need to be button twos because it'll be nicer that way. We don't have a remove method yet, I don't think. We, though we can just go GUI components and hit remove, I think. Uh, but we, we need to make a method for this. I almost made a mistake here. We are adding our entries to our parent object. And we weren't extending container. Uh, so we need to make a remove method. So how the remove method will work is it, it'll just be public void remove uh, and we'll just do GUI component, or not even GUI component, this needs to be, this also needs to be uh, lowered down to button. Or no. Uh, wow, you can't, uh, you can't add uh, GUI buttons to this, I don't think. Huh. Where's my button? You extend GUI button. Button two. We need to reverse the order of these two. So it'll be this would be GUI component. And then we need to take error occurred submit bug report. Oh wow, I uh, I broke IntelliJ. GG. Okay, I need to take all of this stuff, and all of this needs to go. It, what just broke is I just made a circular error, and and uh, needless to say, this is freaking out. It's like, how do I brain? It's like, I do not know how to brain. I broke all my things. Okay, so... We need to take all of the constructors out of this and we need to switch them places. Uh, actually, we need to keep that constructor. Then we need to do these ones. We're going to leave that there. Um, And what we're going to do is copy this. We'll have a separate default size for components. And then we need to just change these. So rename, continue. It's going to ask me that every single time I rename. I'm going to have to probably install, reinstall, yeah, rename certain usage. But it's, 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 I think it, I really seriously broke IntelliJ there. Uh, this should work. So we've got all of our super methods here. We just got to go through the chain of crap and then figure out to make sure that we didn't break anything important. Uh, why is the refresh button think it's broken? Okay, so you're making a new refresh button. Incompatible type. Uh, 
I'm going to have to go through and do this on a few things real quick. Okay, so this is going to be... Man, we need to do this on this one too. This needs to be different here. I gotta do my stupid generic thing. This is the problem with generics, is now I have to do this with them. Is I have to now put a huge chain of crap going all the way up in order to make them function properly. And we go here, this will be, instead of this will be, uh, well actually we'll put E there. This needs to be 9 picks button. I wish there was an easier way to do this. There's literally not. We're not going to do it on checkbox here. So on checkbox, it'll just be GUI button check. Because this is considered a final object, even though it's not final. And same thing on here. Yeah, these are just button images. So this would be this right here. Okay, so we got an error somewhere here. Yes, right, we were making a remove method. So this needs to be GUI component. And then, yeah, just component. There's no real thing here. And then um, if, what we want to do is we go with components dot contains component. We go components dot remove component update positions. So this will update our, our objects. Every time we remove something, we'll update all our position data. So that way if we remove an entry from a list, our list just goes up and down in size. Uh, right now we're just doing an array here, so we don't have to worry about that. If we were doing a list object, we would. Um, yeah, right here. Remove button. Uh, and then we want to do one last thing. We want to make a protected boolean um, update position logic equals false. This is an override real quick to prevent the, uh, the data from updating every time anything happens. So we do like this, update position logic. I think that's uh, how we want to do this. There's a lot of work we got to kind of handle with this. There's, a, there's quite a few things to still do. Uh, this is the only place I'm going to stick it in, though, um, as... I guess we can do it right here with update position logic. So that way we don't update position logic at all if we're doing stuff. And... There's ways we can handle this, but right now it's, that'll that'll do. And we said we it says there's an error somewhere in here. I don't see one. Uh, just IntelliJ being IntelliJ, I guess. So this way we can go um, update. There we go. Update position logic. It was false. We can just turn it on and off real quick. And then update position logic. It was true. Looks pretty good actually. I mean, reload entries every time we set stuff. So this will this will kill everything off. And then what we want to do here also is uh, button entries equals null. And then we go with button entries equals null. We need to make an array. So we go button entries equals new gui button two. And to be honest, these wouldn't actually be buttons to be uh, every single time. Um, we would. It's the reason why I've got the reload thing here is because we're also going to go to protected. Um, I have an idea. E extends GUI component.
Oh, that actually works, I'm surprised. Because what this will let us do is we can extend this, and we can stick whatever we want in this array. So we can do whatever we want size-wise and everything else. Um, so this will be entries shown. Cannot instantiate directly. Oh, really? got a way to do it just we won't we won't be able to be creative here so it'd be new entry and then by default we're going to return um, new GUI button 2 and this will be 10 and we're going to do uh, int index 10 plus index. And then our position logic is going to be x position. It's going to be y position plus, and then we need to get another method here. So we protected int. I don't know. I'm not even going to answer it. Uh, the thing is, I probably should pick it up because I do sort of recognize that number. If it's important, they'll call back. So, GY, so this would be entry Y, or get entry Y spacing. And we're going to return um, 20, which is the default button size. This would be index times y and what else are we missing here oh you're looking for a string value um, we'll default it to this real quick and then we just have to uh, create some callback system here Are you still bitching? Okay, let's get rid of this because this is this is dumb. That's not gonna work. Okay. Okay, so let's see that phone call which I ignored. That's why I recognize that that number. It's a uh, it's a job hiring. Uh, company I get calls from them almost like twice a week even though I repeatedly tell them I'm not interested at this point in time okay so what we want to do is if it's uh, if it's no something I guess so we're gonna go for int i equals zero i is less than button entries dot length and i plus plus and it'll be button entry dot i equals new entry and I just got a deja vu moment typing this array in like I've done this before and I've yeah the truth is I've done this so many times okay so we've got no naming variables right now for the entries so there's going to be some kind of callback object that's going to give us the data required for each entry which is including the disabled and enabled status um, including our scroll component So we need something for this. Java has something like this built into it, but we're going to have to create it. So we're going to have to make an interface for this real quick. Actually, no. No interface. We'll make an object. UI array. So something. Something, 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 something. Let's call it callback GUI array. 
Um, it's supposed to be public string git entry name int index. Uh, we'll just return this. Uh, well, actually, we'll just do this with entry and it'll be plus index. And it'll be public string or public boolean is enabled and index return return true and what we do is you just put this up here so gy callback array callback and you'll have to specify this as part of the uh, creation of this system. Or else they won't know how to do your, handle your entries. And then, one more thing. So we go public int git size. Now this has to be abstract so people can't just pass this in. This will be abstract. We're going to redo this later because there's a much, 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 much better way to do this. And it would be involve kind of applying an interface to each of the objects you're listing and then have them, them provide data. But right now this will work. This dot callback equals callback. Okay, so we need to keep track of our size. Not what I want to do. Super. Dot update mc mouse x mouse y okay override we'll be at recording time right now wow now this will just be a long video oh well i'm not too picky well i do have to be heading out soon and go pick me up uh, cable equipment so apparently like i noticed on twitter i'd, I'd probably be losing internet sometime this week because we'll be switching providers uh, it's probably not going to happen until next week now and we're just going to tough it up and deal with Spectrum for a while longer. Who knows? Maybe they'll redeem themselves in the next few days. I, don't, I doubt it, though. I, I've never heard a company literally tell you you cannot be a customer with this anymore if you don't do this. And it's like, wow, you, you, you guys, are, you could just put up with it. Because the, the thing is, they're, they're upset with us because we won't turn in our equipment and and go pick up new equipment from across town because we keep going like, hey, we, we want you to mail this stuff to us. Instead of mailing it to us, they showed up one day when we weren't here. And of course, we weren't here. They didn't tell us what day they were going to show up. And they were like, hey, we're here to install your cable. I was like, you guys didn't tell us you were going to be showing up. And nobody was home. And they blame us for that. And they're, they're like, hey, we, we wasted money to come do this for you. And you weren't there. So unless you come and do this, we're going to drop your service or charge you for the price of, of that guy showing up, which was like a hundred some bucks. And it's like, I've never heard a company do that before, at least in this day and age. I know cable companies used to be pretty bad a while back. Anyway, so uh, on update, we need to keep track of how, what our size is. So go private int. Uh, array or entry count equals negative one. And we'll be going like... What we're going to do is we just entry, entry count equals callback dot get size. So we're going to get our size basically, but we want to go, okay, if uh, entry count does not equal callback dot get size, uh, we need to do things. We need to reload our entries. That, that's namely, we need to make sure we reload. Um, we then need to get our scroll bar. 
So I'm gonna go scroll bar dot max scroll set max scroll is callback dot get size dot entries to show. So we wanna our our, our maximum scroll capability is basically whatever's remaining afterwards. Um, hopefully this will disable our buttons by default if our max scroll is too large or too small. Uh, on reload, we forgot to do something here. We need to go through all of our buttons and we need to set them disabled or, visit or, or hide. There's a method for it. I knew there was one. So you want to hide each one. And then what we want to do is go, so int index equals i plus um, scroll bar dot get current scroll. If index is less than Okay, that'll work. Index is less than um, entry count. Then we want to enable that button again. So I'm going to go show button. And then what we also want to do is go button entry dot I dot dis display text equals callback dot get entry name index. Um, then we also want to enable it too. So I'm going to grab this line real quick, put this down here. Dot set enabled, callback dot is enabled index. That'll work because that'll show all our stuff and it should work. There's a lot we got to do with this. But if we get this all correct, it should cut down on a lot of work we'll have to do. And the theory, that's how it's going to work. Kind of probably should have planned this out a little bit better. So I have a feeling I'm forgetting to do something, but I'm not sure what I'm do forgetting to do. Oh, I know what I am forgetting to do. Uh, add, we're not adding our buttons. Uh, we then need... In the callback, we need a button press system. So callback, public, void, on pressed, and index. So when do you do that? That's uh, not a container, it's in the components, I believe. No, 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 it's our container. Here we go. So that'll be, yeah, we'll throw that in here. So that override, and then we int id equals button dot id, and there's two things we need to handle here. We go, okay, if id equals zero, which is our scroll bar, we need to reload entries. So every time our scroll bar changes, changes position, we want to reload our current positioning. And then we want to I just had a thought real quick, I want to check something. Uh, yeah, okay, that reloads. I was like, oh, are we not reloading our stuff right before we start? And I, I need to make sure we were doing that. So greater than equal to 10 and ID ID is less than 10 plus entries shown. No, we're just gonna do it this way. Index equals ID minus 10 plus, plus scroll dot get current scroll. That should give us our index, and then we just go callback dot on pressed index. I think it's what we need. It looks right.
Yeah, that's fine. Um, we're going to set our default to be like 200. means we actually need to do something like this 200 and then our height needs to be entries times get y spacing cannot call from constructor really uh, that's stupid. Okay, private int y spacing equals 20, because I know we can use variables from here, I think. Can't even use var- what? Stupid system. This stuff, y spacing equals y spacing. We'll just make people have to set it and we'll just do something like this real quick. And we'll default it. So we'll go this dot callback id x y 20 and then entries. I always forget you can't do a lot of stuff from the constructor, and it, it, I, it's one of the many reasons I actually don't like the constructor system in Java because there's just so much you can't do. And the ideal is you want to make an object you can literally just call with no parameters and have it basically do your entire initialization for you, and uh, not have to do anything. And that's sometimes really hard to do with how this stuff is set up. But a lot of people are like, hey, well, you just use your methods to set everything. It's like, well, then you have to make a method for everything you want to set, and then you end up with this huge long chain of method invo invocations in order to get your stuff set up. And you don't want to do that either, because that's, yeah. Um, this all looks good, though. So we're going to just have to test at this point, because, I mean, we're hour 30. We're about two hours now. So what we want to do is you need to get rid of the profile scroll. And then we need to replace it with the thing we just made. Uh, let me really quickly make sure that uh, the current version of the GUI is pushed up. So we're just going to call sync on this. I didn't really change anything. So we're going to make sure the current version is pushed up so that way if we screw up really, really bad, we just hit invert and we're back to normal. So if this whole system doesn't work and, and we want to just kind of get mo momentum moving forward, yeah, we're good there. So we want to get rid of the profile scroll bar, which means we want to get rid of this. And we want to replace it with a GUI array. And this would be profile array. And then we come down here and we create the profile array. Profile array equals new GUI array. Uh, we're going to need to create a callback system for this. So I need to go find wherever my access system is. Go to the GUI and we want to make profile array callback extends callback GUI array implement methods and we want to basically just kind of put in our access system GUI so we want to just kind of go GUI dot Profile names dot length, and we need to make sure this isn't also if it goes like null. Then if not zero. And this would be public final, and then we'll go public profile array UI access system UI system. To be honest, we could have did this whole thing with a listener system, but this, this does work. It's about basically the same thing. And then what is our positioning system? Um, I believe... 
our x position was 104 technically but we want to get rid of our profile buttons so profile buttons gone it's going to error out like almost the entire thing uh, so what is our position here we are two from the edge 40 from the top 72 40 number of entries we want to show is 10 at a time we are missing something here it's four ints uh, we need an ID uh, we'll just do one And then right here, what we want to do, uh, technically every time we go to reload, so actually I'm going to, I'm going to remake this method here. And what, what will happen is anytime reload was a call called originally, this will be reload profiles. You want to call profile array dot, uh, update positions maybe? No. This needs to be public. You want to reload the entry array. Cool. The only thing we got to do is clear out the old packet handling, which is gone now. And then what is ID 1 actually set to? That's uh, apparently a request packet for a refresh button. So this needs to be 4, because I think 4 was the original. Yeah, reload profile list. Because uh, what, what, what right now, what is the button four doing for us? It's basically telling us that something has changed. Um, except this is already handled for us. I think we're good though. I think it's all we needed. And actually we need to implement this down here yeah, I think we're good we'll, we'll hit um oh no wait we, we need to get uh, we need to do a few more things I like yeah we, we just hit start and it's like no it actually needs to uh We need these two entries. I'm trying to think of how to do the second one right here. So we're going to paste both these in there. The second method gets pasted in. I'm not sure how to handle that, but that has to be handled. Uh, anyways, this would be... index, And current profile index so we just need to basically do that so you want to go gui dot current profile index equals index is how we're going to handle this but uh, current index is not exactly updated right now so we got to figure out how to do that and I believe that is going to be handled via on button pressed so current profile index okay so on button press is how we're going to set that which means yeah, we, yeah, we'll just have this way. I was, I was thinking, you know what, we could probably go store the current index inside here, and I'm like, you know what, that's not going to work. So this would be due to current profile index equals index. And actually, what is, how does this work? How are we using this? Oh, wow, we're using this everywhere. Profile IDs, ID. Load profile isn't. Oh, yeah, we need to uh, do a callback for that. So it'll be gui.load profile. Yeah, it's acting like it's not even being called. Uh, I think we're good now. Let's go ahead and launch, and if we break it, we break it. If we don't, we're good. And I'll be so happy to have a system like this. Oh, come on. Why are you complaining now?
cannot be applied to GUI container base. Why? Why are you being weird? Well, that should be fine. These are all GUI buttons. GUI component extends GUI button engine. This extends GUI button two, which extends GUI component. Oh, which then does not send its send down stream. Okay. Which then extends button. Okay. Why are you freaking out still? Is cannot be applied to GUI component. What? You totally can be supplied. You are a button. This is why I hate generics. I hate them so much. They don't work. Build, rebuild the entire project. That's how we're gonna solve this, I think. I'll take a drink of my soda while I wait for it to rebuild. Stuff tastes horrible. I got Mountain Dew Code Red. And it used to taste good once upon a time. And I think my taste has changed. I've gotten so used to drinking tea and everything. And actually having a pretty clean palate for once where my tongue is not completely dead. I can taste things now. Which is unfortunate though. That means if I walk through some place that smells bad, I can not only smell the smell, I can taste the smell. Which is horrible. Some pretty nasty places around here in Columbus. Oh, it's gonna do it again. It's gonna be like, hey, you can't do that. Odd thing is it's breaking only on these. So how do we fix this? So where it's breaking is it's it's having trouble casting to button for some reason, which doesn't make sense because if we go to our image button, which extends button two, which then extends component, which then extends GUI button. We'll do it this way. Weird thing is, I wonder why it's only failing to compile here. Really? How are you fucking up so bad? Doesn't make any sense. So GUI nine picks button is an instance of GUI image, which is an instance of GUI button two. But this says they're not. Generics, so stupid. I'm gonna rebuild again. This is this is why I I, I actually have a uh, love hate relationship with generics is that when they work they're amazing they let you do some really really cool things. When they fail they fail because of stupid reasons like this where it's like hey we can't convert the type but the whole reason you're using a generic is to convert the type automatically for you and it's not working. Just as a, a tip by the way um, generics are lost on compile time which is the reason why this is happening. It's having trouble figuring out what I'm, the hell I'm trying to do. Because the uh, the generics are not solidified. It's 
So it's going like you're you're getting back an instance of GUI component back is what it's going. So if I drag the error screen over here, it's like hey, can't convert from GUI component to GUI button two because what we're getting back is a GUI component because something in the generic list is failing. And in all honestly, I could just do this real quick. GUI component. Or even better. Why, why is it doing that? Stupid logic. There's a hotkey. I think it's like if you hit control shift Z, it actually deletes the line. We're just going to cast these. Even though the whole point of that running is to do what exactly what I want it to do, which is auto cast so I don't have to cast. That was the reason I made that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see it's not working now. Oh, it's going to break everything. Oh, uh, what the... Th okay. We're going to have like a... Uh, when it goes to run, it's just going to crash on us. It's just going to be like, hey, hey we're, we're broken. I'm going to have to deal with that gonna probably break every GUI in the process. The thing is, when we were extending GUI button 2, this wasn't a problem until we switched it from extending GUI button 2 to extending component, where component was our base component, and it just had the problem. Probably because GUI button 2 was our base component, which is the reason why it was working just fine. But I, I've suspected that the generics are a problem, but it's, it's hard to tell, and there's... This is kind of where I wish Java had some kind of system where I could go, I want to return the exact type of the class which we are an instance of, instead of returning the class that I'm currently contained inside of. So if we're, say A is extending B, B is extending C, if uh, C had a method in there that returned itself, so it returned C, which was this, instead of returning C, why can't we return A? Because that's what we actually are. That's what I want, I want, I want a, meth a system like that. That's the reason why I use generics, and I kind of wish Java had a more structurally strong version of that so I could actually have that happen. I wonder if you could return this. I wonder if that's a, I wonder if that's a thing. Oh, we can't test it, though, without uh, this freaking out. I have ways I can fix it, though, but that those ways would be using like annotation processing and stuff. And that's self-defeating. Anyways, we'll get this tested up and hopefully we'll have our array here and that will start to begin. So the reason why I'm taking all the time to do this instead of working on the 1.8 update is uh, this is part of the JSON GUI system which we have to build anyways in order to properly update. So part of this would be you'd go into your thing and you'd go, hey, I want a uh, a new array, and here's how we how you get the components of the array. You provide the callback system. And you notice how the callback system is not dependent on Minecraft code; and it works just fine. That's that's kind of why we're doing that. Is we want to make we make as much code that's Minecraft independent as possible, because then you don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to change. You don't have to update it. It's good. Uh, we're missing. Why are we missing? Do we, did we make an add button in the G? Oh, we did not actually make an add in here. Okay, I done goofed. I have to uh, get around to doing that. So this will be button list dot add profile array. <laughs> it, it's working. You, you mean you could tell it's working? It's just um. Something broke. I'm not sure what. Yeah, something, something broken. He broke it, dude. Uh, so we're we're building. So if we go, we, let's close that. We don't need that. We need this. So we build up our entries. Our entries currently are just button twos with entry names and stuff. So we should be rendering GUI button twos. Uh, let's see. So 
we do our super do render. Super do render does all of our stuff. Uh, this is where the texture is actually sort of getting bound. Oh, oh yeah, we're binding a texture up here. Um, and we're calling draw button here, which should bind a brand new texture. The only problem is it's binding the wrong texture. So we're binding get texture. Get texture, by the way, is GUI component by default. That's our problem. Okay. So we need to take this. We want to go here. Do this, and then... Button textures. So fun. This should be the Minecraft vanilla button texture, which is the widget sheet, and that's what we need. Because that's the reason why it's not rendering pro properly. So let me change that. Got a lot of work to do here. <laughs> so much work. So I want to get the JSON GUIs going because GUIs are a big component of a lot of our machines. Uh, I'm probably just going to come through and do the container JSON GUIs here because I think it's all we're using right now. We're not using really fancy GUIs. Most of ours are just inventory slots. Actually, how many? I, I'm trying to think of like ICBM and the thing is ICBM doesn't really have a lot of, of stuff. That, that's the main thing that needs to be converted is the ICBM GUIs. And... Uh, we only have, I think, two machines that have containers on them. Then we have, the rest of them are pretty much just fields and buttons and stuff, and those are the easiest to convert, to be honest. Uh, I might not worry about it. I might just convert to the 1.8 GUI system real quick and do an update. And I, I hate to just do a crap update real quick, but we might just need to do that just to get, get something out the door. Even though I know most of you going like, why are you updating the 1.8? Why don't you just skip the 1.9? So we're doing 1.8 because you got to do 1.8 to get to 1.9. Or you'll do twice the amount of work to do the 1.9 update. And I plan to make my systems compatible with all Minecraft versions. So that means I need to update the 1.8 anyways. So that way we can get Volts Engine running for 1.8. And then we go to a 1.9 update, which will be... Each update we do will be easier than the next. So we go 1.8, which will be the hardest jump. Then 1.9 will not be too difficult. Then 10 will be even less work than that. Then 11 should be seamless. I've been told there's almost no difference between 10 and 11. The same with uh, 11 and 12. There's almost no difference between them. So that means as soon as we get through that 1.8 hurdle, the rest of it should flow pretty quickly. It'll be basically uh, uh, next couple months we'll have everything done. So by the end of the summer, the hope is to be up to the latest version of Minecraft. That's the hope as I say that. I'm using the word if and hope because I don't know what's going to happen. It got worse. <laughs> it got so much worse. How? How are we messing up this bad? We're not even getting the text. We should be getting like text over top of these at some point. That's not even working. Um, bloody hell. Trying to decide if I need to start doing um, GDL push and pop calls now. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing GL push pop calls between these. GL eleven dot push push matrix. This isn't gonna change anything really, but uh, the hope is it'll help. Okay, didn't do anything, which I knew was going to happen. Uh, the problem has got to be we're binding the wrong textures. So we come down in here. I mean, we're binding the texture here. We 
enabling blend function. Say, which is just sets up our colors here. This resets our color palette. So we should be on reset point every single time we, we render. But we're not. We're getting this screwball of junk. You know what? I actually might know what's wrong with this. This needs to be... That's the reason why the background's all screwballed. Here's our uh, here's our GUI slider, which isn't working at all. The buttons are there. You can hear them, right? And they're they're moving up and down. Uh, for some reason, the uh, the the actual button button renders are not working properly. Uh, that is most likely because of how the render method is set up. That's exactly why it's broken. Okay, so we're gonna have to close this down and fix that and. Uh, do a couple more things real quick. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go over here and I wanna take the new entry system here and we're gonna take it from here and we're gonna put it in the callback. And this will be int index, int x, int y, int spacing. X, Y, spacing, there we go. That way the callback's got more control over this. X position, Y position. No, I, yeah, we'll leave that there. We just need to put Y position here. Okay, and then one last thing, and back in the callback system, which we're gonna actually go here, then to here, we wanna do something here. So I'm gonna go protected, int get entry width, should be return, we're gonna return 100 by default, and then we're gonna pop, ah, yeah, protected, and to get entry height, which we're going to return 20. The reason we're doing this is that way we can do this real quick, get uh, entry width, get entry height, so our button's actually update the size properly, and then we can f get our size variable here, so we're going to copy this, and we're going to come up to the position array update thing, put this here, and we'll adjust the size mechanic um, when we load up and we get everything rendering properly. First things first is I need to fix uh, button image two, which has got the wrong texture set. So hopefully button images have got the right textures. Yeah, so they got the right textures here, so we make sure that's not there, right? So we don't have to worry about that. And the nine pixels got its own thing, which I don't know why it's not that overrated. So we need to just fix the render call on here. So we need to go all the way to GUI button, grab its ugly render call system, and uh, chop see it so it works properly in the button images too. Actually, I don't think we need to do anything with this. We just need to rename a few variables. Actually, we're gonna rename this to MC, and this would be mouse X, mouse Y, that takes care of this field, so we can get rid of that.
the reason I'm getting rid of a lot of this is we uh, are going to go ahead and do the do render, and we should be able to just take this entire thing here, and then bring it down, take this part, put here, then take these parts, put here, and of course we'll leave that, uh, that string render, which is our ID system there, because we actually do need to do that for debug later. Um, and we can just do that override, and then we can get rid of all this, as this should be the standard render format that we already have, and that way we're only using the do render format, which should go ahead and take care of anything we need. And there's a git hover state system. I didn't know that was there. That basically returns... Oh, that returns the hover state. That's not nothing important. So let me check this real quick. It just times this by the height of the button and everything. There's a lot of junk here that needs to be fixed. This is the hover, hover state. Caller. I feel like I'm going to have to recode this because there's two rectangles here. This is the default render system, and I don't know if GUI image... So does 9pixel have its own render? So 9pixel is even using its own render system. And it makes me curious how this this is functioning. Image button? Image button has its own render system. So it's, it's already been modified. Uh, so what we want to do with this real quick, we want to go ahead and, uh, while we're at it, just clean up this button. So we're going to come here, grab this. Technically it means we want to... Oh wait, no, we're good here. It's... My brain was a little off cue and I was trying to go like, ah, technically we should do this or this or that or this or this. We just literally need to copy this method, put it in here. And then we also need to do one more thing. We need to put the debug back in to the image button. That way we have our debug. Uh, right now there's no way to turn the debug on and off, so yeah, don't need to worry about that. Cool. We should be we should be good to go. You know, technically this means this should be in the super, but I worry about that another time. Go ahead and launch all this. Be quite a few commit changes, and we're at wow. You get to cut these recording times down. Okay, so yeah, still just waiting for this to launch. So at least we got all the button stuff coded out here. So this is actually pretty good that we got all the set to the do render stuff. This will make it much easier to rework these buttons in the future and change their behavior. Why is this even here? Actually, I'm starting to think. We, yeah, we, I don't think we need this. We can just do this. I'll probably just make some helper methods for rendering strings here later too. Try to get uh, as much of this stuff component up. Because eventually the goal is to take the, the main GUI, and you won't have to make a GUI. You just call JSON helper, load GUI for this class, 
and you're done. And it will create all this stuff for you. And all you have to do is put all your logic inside of the buttons and your components. And then your GUI is just comprised of a whole bunch of containers with components inside of them. And then you're done. You don't have to do any real work. You just set up your stuff with JSON. There we go. We fixed it. Uh, our width is a bit high. All of our buttons are disabled. <laughs> Uh, we we uh, we need to invert something here. So call back this. Uh, okay, we're in the wrong one. We want this call back. This needs to be this. So we'll hit Alt Reload. Hitting this should reload it. Yep, there we go. All of our stuff works. Uh, we're missing our buttons here, so our buttons are not rendering. Not that they work, because we don't have enough objects to scroll with. Uh, our width is wrong, so we need to set up our width. And how we would do that, we go profile arrays dot set width 100. Or 100 plus 9, actually. Yeah. And then what we do is just reload. There we go, that fixed it. Uh, we do need to get the buttons working, but uh, since my brother wants to go to the store here, we're going to cut this recording at 2 hours. So yeah, I'll be back. We'll get back to working on this year later.